right, cool. You got a shot of me. Start there. You got my shot. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so here's our agenda. I know it might be a little hard to see the screen. So we're gonna we did the mate and greet, I did the video release. I'm gonna do a lecture on about me, short, relatively short. Course overview, the most important thing you're gonna get today. And then we're gonna work on my IT lab. I'm actually gonna have you guys all sign up on your accounts. And then we're gonna have a visit. Alex is Alex, who is the representative for my IT lab, is gonna come in and chat with you for a little bit today. So we have a very full agenda, okay? So the first thing I'd like to do, and put this in your notes, is about me. And the, and the reason I do this is to really just give you, and I know I don't have it fully presented, so I'll go ahead and do that for the, for the video recording, is I really just like to give you a little bit about who your instructor is. Um, and to hopefully in, inspire you a little bit, we'll see if, if I'm able to do that. Um, so a little bit about me is I absolutely love technology, no doubt about it. I have it zoomed in, that's why it's doing that. Couple of things I love, okay? <coughs> I, I love all the gadgets. I, I'm definitely a gadget gal. I, I love all things Google. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard me mention that on Tuesday. But I wanna show you a couple of my favorite Google technologies that I have uh, with me today. The first one, and I'll switch, go to the wider shot. Um, I'm gonna go to the Elmo real quick. Yeah, not that, it's this. Okay, let's see if you guys can see. <coughs> You got it? Yeah, can you see it right there? Yeah, it's not showing up so well, but there, but what, anybody know what this is? Smartwatch. Yeah, it's a smartwatch, right? So I can speak to it, it can show me my heart rate, which is kind of cool, right? If I hold still long enough, it will show me my heart rate, which is awesome. Right now, it'll be interesting to see if it, it does actually have to be, you have to be really still when you do it, uh, which is, sometimes it does it and sometimes it doesn't. You know, it's not perfect technology yet. I can already tell it's actually not gonna do it because um, it's taking too long. But the other thing it can do, and I'll go ahead and pull it back, you can talk to it. So actually I can voice respond to text on it. Uh, it does, and I'll just go ahead and move back. It does also um, track all my steps, which I love. So I'm always knowing how many steps I have a day on it. So it's pretty cool technology. You think wearable technology is kind of maybe what we're gonna see in the coming years? How come? How come you think wearable technology is going to become so pervasive? It's getting smaller. Yeah, so it's much more small, right? I mean, the power of this watch. I mean, we have computers that fill rooms, but we have twice, three, four times as much power on my wrist, right? Why else? Why else? Mike. It improves business. Yeah, how so? Let's go to mobile next, but how so? Uh, re reduces cost for products and increases production by reducing the amount of time needed to produce. How so? How? how? Well, if, you're, if you're walking someplace, okay, can, that's true. So if I'm, it, it's true. I'm walking to work. Walking somebody text happens. message me, and I, I just respond back on. I don't have to. I mean, these are first world problems, right? <laughs> that I have to pull out my phone and I have to. I mean, you guys know what I mean by first world problems. Yeah. Okay. What does first world problem mean? Third world doesn't think about these things. They don't have this kind of issue. I mean, right? Right, they're about, you know, so we're blessed in that way. So here's my other piece of technology that I'll show you today. Uh, I've had this for about six months, but I've worn it longer than that, right? So this is Google Glass, right? So have you heard of this technology? Yeah. Yeah, have you? Yeah, so what's kind of cool about this, and I can show you in this way. I'm gonna actually see if I can get this working, okay? So I'm gonna actually switch back to the Elmo. Because the thing is, this device is connected through, how's that, is it showing up? Yeah. So this is actually connected through my phone. So if I want to do something on glass, I have to have a phone connection. I don't have to be on my phone, but because of what I'm about to show you, I actually do need to do it. Oh, sorry, I'm here. I'm going to start a screencast, right? Hold on, there we go. <coughs> so that's what I see. Right there. So I got a message just recently from James Chaw getting back to me. So if I'm walking, not only do I just not have to look at my wrist, I can just look up. I can glare. So if I'm glaring through the screen, right, so that's another. So Todd McLeod, who's another instructor here, just sent me a message a little while ago, right? So I can flip through my messages notifications. But there's actually some other cool stuff you can do here. 
Let me see if I can get back. I actually have to. And all these things that I'm doing, I could, I can actually do through other means. Voice is another way I can interact with this thing. Um, one thing, let's see if it's, if I remember where it's at. Hold on just a second. No, those are not my... There's actually, and I think I have it on this pair because I just restored it recently. It has this new app that I really love. And, and it, what it does is if I'm, I play guitar sometimes, it'll actually show the chords right up on the screen. So if I'm playing guitar, it'll just show me the chords that I need to do. And I'm trying to remember where I put the app, so I have to go back and find it. But I think you get the general idea, right? So what do you think of this technology? Let me go back here. Is it cool? It's got the cool factor. Has, has, has there been a backlash with this kind of technology? Yeah. Yeah, what's, and by the way, after we lecture, if you want to come up and play with it, you're welcome to. What's some of the backlash we're seeing about this? Um, I saw one of the backlashes, um, like, a gentleman over there could be on his computer, turn on his computer and power up and start putting in bank information or a password. And a developer used Google Glass, he can look over there and watch the finger movements, and it translates his finger movements into a real-time picture of exactly what he was doing on his screen. Sure. So he just has to glance at you and steal all <coughs> yeah. your keystrokes. And yeah, so it's not like very good, right? Do you guys get that? Did you get that? Right? So that, that's scary. That's yeah, the that's scary crazy. part. Because if, if that same thing was happening and I had a phone, he might more likely see that I was doing that, right? But if you're just glancing through something like that and he's not paying attention, absolutely. Other other things you've heard of maybe that happened? Yeah. Just again, like how you had started the, today's uh, lecture is just people being recorded without not being Yeah, heard. right? So absolutely. There, there People can be recorded. And I think it goes along the same thing, but in general. Because, I mean, if you're doing something out in public, should you be aware that somebody may be recording you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I had you write a release, but most people don't, right? It's not like you're going to walk on glass and everybody that comes by, oh, by the way, sign a release, I'm recording you, Right? Now, there's been another backlash up in, up in the Bay Area. Anybody know about this? They call these people that wear this device a certain name. They're called glass holes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll assume from that chuckle you know what I meant, okay? I would say because of some of these reasons that we're talking about, right? And not only that, there's kind of this up in the Bay Area, this technology elitist, right, that... Only the people that really can afford this technology, right, and that are kind of elitist in their thinking. And there's a lot of people that can't afford it, and they're struggling on basic stuff. And here you are creating this kind of technology. There's some of that going on, which I think is valid and and worth talking about. But in general, for me, I love technology. I I use it all the time. Uh, You won't see any more paper from me except the release that you did. Second thing about me is that I love Fresno City College. I'm blessed to have this job. I absolutely feel privileged to teach the way I get to teach. I'm, I, I think I told you guys I'm well paid. I get a lot of vacation time. I got great benefits. Um, and honestly, I do this job even if they didn't pay me this much. Because when I signed up for this job, they actually, I thought I was going to get much less pay. And when they sent me into the HR office and they showed me how much I was going to get paid, I tried not to scream like a little girl. Okay? I don't mean that in a bad way, little girls, okay? But just like scream and yell, seriously, that's what you're going to pay me? I'm like, sweet, right? Walked out crying my eyes out. But I love it. I was in your position. I went to community college, right? And I, was, I came from a family that didn't really value education. My parents thought I was the one that was going to take over the family farm. I'm not sure why. We could talk about why, but it doesn't matter. But it wasn't me. I was like... It's not me. It's not what I'm going to do. I want to do something different. So I left home. I was still hungover from high school graduation when I hit the road. I left when I was 17 and I came to California because I grew up in Oklahoma most of my formative years. And trust me, I knew if I stayed there, I wasn't going anywhere and I wasn't going anywhere fast. So at least I knew enough to get out. Okay? And no offense to anybody that has relatives in Oklahoma, some of my closest relatives still live there and this is on youtube and they will see it and they will comment swear to god they will because they do that okay but i love city i love the environment i love the teaching environment i really didn't think i would either i was actually working as a uh, consultant down at the county and somebody who teaches here was like you know you'd make a good teacher and i laughed out loud i'm like there is no way i want to teach 
Because to me, when I thought about teaching, I thought about whiny kids and people that didn't really want to be here. And then they said, no, just teach one class and see how it is. And sure enough, I came, I taught in that room over there, I taught web development, and I knew this was for me. I knew I was going to go home and do this, and I did. I ended up having to get my master's full-time while I taught my first year full-time, and it was the hardest year I've ever had in my life. I'm just impressed I got through it. But I did, and now I get to do what I love, which is combining the teaching part, the spiritual part, and the technology part, because I love both parts of my life. You're welcome to ask me questions if you want. The other thing is about me is that I'm a tree hugger. I'm a freaking environmentalist. I think we all should be. Honestly, it should just be part of being human now. Because unfortunately, what we're doing to the world and what we're doing to the environment is really bad. So let me just tell you what I do. And not as a, only as a way to promote something, do something, right? So the thing, and I've already told you this, I walk to work every day. I walk 30 minutes here, 30 minutes home every day. We were talking about this earlier. I feel better because I do it. The other thing I do, and you guys know we have a water shortage issue. Yeah, how bad is it in Fresno? Severe. Actually, in Fresno, it's not nearly as bad as our surrounding areas. Our smaller towns have it much worse than Fresno. Fresno actually has a pretty decent infrastructure because nobody in Fresno ran out of water during this last summer. But people in the outlining areas, heck yeah. So we should all be more conscious about water. So here's what I do. I capture 70% of my household water, and I reuse it in ways that are for my own purposes. Not only that, we have to pay for water now. So we all should be kind of thinking about how we're doing this. So what I do is we, when we rebuilt a part of our house, I put in a system so that the kitchen sink, one of the sinks, is captured to outside areas. I use that to water the grass, and which I pretty much killed the grass at this point, so I water the vegetable garden. And I do some other watering with it, but I capture bathroom water. I capture all other kinds of water. I decrease my pool water needs. Um, I don't chlorinate my water. I have solar on my roof. Uh, 70% of all of our power is uh, done by solar. So, and I, I definitely have decreased my, my garbage because I look at it and I compost almost all of it so I know what's coming out of the house. So are you impressed? Yeah. You have any questions about that? Dang? Oh, okay, I'll take that. But do you have any serious questions about them? What do you do with your Okay, so good question. In the bath, I'm actually working on a system, but today here's what I have to do. I actually don't shower anymore. I actually take full baths. We schedule baths so that at least two of us are taking a bath and not together, although that could happen. Okay? And then I, I know, don't ask me questions about that. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so the, the thing I do is I actually tote the water from the bathroom to the kitchen sink where I then capture it. So I consider it part of my workout is I actually take five uh, gallon of water at, at a time and I tote it to the living room or to the kitchen and I put it into the wastewater or into the gray water what system. What do you mean uh, uh, capture it like? Yeah, so outside of the house, if you want me to, I can bring pictures. But outside the house, we have, um, have you ever seen rainwater capture barrels? So we <laughs> use rain, really we, big. yeah, they're not actually as big as I'd like them to be. I'd actually like them to be bigger. But we have five <laughs> of them t- outside of the house to capture the rainwater when we do get some. But mostly it's to capture the gray water from the sink. So I actually have two, two outside of the kitchen, uh, outside uh, of the house at the kitchen, and there's a pipe that just goes in from one of the sinks, and it goes into that container. And then when I want to water, I go out and use it. I don't, and that actually brings up a good question because it doesn't smell necessarily great, and some people might find that a little offensive, but to me, it's going out to my yard. I don't care if it's got organic matter in it, and organic would be, in this case, food that's left over. I've been washing the distance. I rinse them out, and that's captured water. So the, I could filter it if I wanted to actually end up drinking it, but I don't. I just want to use that water again somewhere else. So that's the other thing is I've dechemicalized. We use no chemicals in the house. The, the detergents and anything we use is all natural, organic base that can totally go out in the yard. So another part of us getting healthy was doing that. That's cool. Isn't that cool? I, 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 I try to be the example, right? I try to be a role model in this area because I should. <coughs> I, sh- I should be a role model. We all should aspire to be role models. And so thank you for, for acknowledging that. 
So one of the things that's come out of this, this was me five years, oh, oh, no, that's not the right one. Let me do it, sure. This was me five years ago. Can you see it? I weigh 240 pounds. So I've lost and I've kept off over five years. I weigh about 155 right now. Okay? I've lost and kept it off for five years. And yeah, thank you, Joel. Thank you. Okay? So the way I did it is I eat mostly uh, raw food. And, and I don't mean uh, sushi. Oh, good. That's, that's often the first question I get when I talk about this. Okay? So what I mean is... Um, um, in our house, we have a mobile food business, and it is um, here to help people eat this kind of food, but we've been eating it this way for about seven years, and it's all plant-based, so it's uh, fruit, nuts, and seeds, and it's wonderful food. Matter of fact, I, have, I, I bring my food everywhere I go because, trust me, the food choices that we have in this world are horrible. Like and paleo, diet. paleo is actually... Um, in some ways, except paleo more focuses on the, the idea of getting out processed foods, which I totally agree with, but more beet, meat, and vegetable-based stuff. I, I try to limit my meat intake to less than 5% of my diet. And so when I do eat meat, it's, it's locally grown stuff. But even then, I just feel better when I don't eat meat. I've found, even though I love meat, i got to tell you, I love meat, but I just feel better when I don't eat it. Does that include fish? No, so no. You fish. No, no, oh, no, I don't fish, eat fish. fish. Okay. Yeah, I, I, anything with a face, I try to eliminate. <laughs> uh, and, and part of that is not just for me, but quite honestly, if you've researched any of the ways that we are um, housing and processing animals in this country, it's horrific. Not only for them, which is a whole issue by itself, but what we're eating. Because we're injecting them with so many chemicals and hormones to make them at least somewhat healthy and I say healthy in quotes here, that you then ingest that and you ingest all those chemicals and hormones that they're injecting in that beef, meat, chicken, whatever it is. Now, I'm not trying to take your meat away from you. Please don't get all freaked out about that, okay? But here's what I would say to you in general, is if you all had to kill the amount of meat that we generally eat, you would not be eating that much meat, right? We're processing a huge amount of animal uh, protein in this country, and we don't need as much protein as people think we do. We're over protein, okay? There's a lot more. And by the way, where do you think the great uh, ape gets their protein? Do they eat other animals? No, they eat greens, <laughs> okay? Greens is one of the best sorts of protein. So, okay, yeah, question. Is that your bird there? Yeah, so that's Buzzy. Uh, he, 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 he died. Um, he died a couple years back, and it was really hard for me because I raised him from the time he was a baby. And uh, it was really a sad situation, but he's no longer with us. And, and in a sense, it's really, really hard. But in a sense, he was a lot of freaking work. That guy was, a, and really any kind of exotic animal is a lot of work. And you have to really think about what you're signing up for. And I, whew, in hindsight, wouldn't I, and I, we didn't get another one because it was like, they do require so much attention. And if you don't give them the right amount of attention, they'll go crazy and they will pluck themselves and you just have to really think about them. So if you're considering them, come talk to me, not as a way to discourage, just as a way to enlighten what that is. But he was awesome, and I loved him, okay? So the last thing about me, or two last things about me, and I told you this on uh, Monday, or Tuesday, I think, is that I am, in addition to all the things that I do, I do volunteer work for Google. So I uh, volunteer uh, to build, do community building for Google, and it's absolutely fun. Uh, I meet with a group of professional developers once a month if you're interested in this kind of thing, which is developing. And it's basically saying, you know, like on my Google phone, right? So on, my, on the Android phone or on the Glass platform or, or on, the, on the wearables, it's like we meet with people that develop this stuff and are working out there in the industry. So it's cool because what this does is it keeps me in touch with technology and I get to go to Google about three times a year, which is awesome. Right? I get to go to Google about three times a year. And, like, see all this stuff that Oh, yeah, I spend a couple of days there. I spend, uh, I get to go on campus. I get to hang out with the Googlers. I, get, I mean, it's awesome. No, no, Google campus is in Mountain View. So let me slow down and, and just say that. So Google headquarters is all over the world, but they, their main headquarters is in Mountain View in the Bay Area. And their campus there is beautiful. I mean, those, those people that work there have every affordance of luxury that you can imagine. 
and they're they're well paid, well taken care of, and they're awesome people for the most part. Yeah. Have you seen the movie about the? Yeah, the, the movie about it's funny. One of my first experiences of actually going up to teach at Google, because I don't know if you heard me say I, I taught at Google twice, uh, both at Mountain View, and they sent me to London. That was like the dream of a lifetime. They sent me to London to teach for them. Sorry, I just am reliving that moment right now because it was totally awesome. Okay, so um, I do the the first experience we had, which was in Mountain View. The night we finished, the intern was showing, we all went to see it, and it was like watching your life up on a big screen played out by Vince Vaughn, right? (laughs) Now, there were some definite um, things in that movie that aren't true, but there were a lot that was. I mean, there was was the way the food is, the The way the people are, huh? The The slipping pods are true. I've seen them, okay? They're there. It's really true, right? So it's a great place. And once in a while, I get fortunate enough to get to actually take a group of students. We've actually had occasions where we've twice taken groups of students up there. So if you're into technology, you might want to consider some of the stuff that we do to get to do that, because it's an awesome experience. So my claim to fame, of, as I've already mentioned, is that I got to teach for Google twice. Um, and I continue to get to do work for them now. Uh, and, I, and I say work in quotes because I volunteer. I absolutely Although they did, they were actually somewhat serious in negotiations with me to go to work there, but it fell through. And somebody asked me, would you go? And I'm like, I would definitely think about it. But I love this job, but I'd definitely think about it if they offered it to me. So we'll see. Summer, summers might be a fun time if they get to send me somewhere. The other thing is um, I got to meet some really cool people at Google. One of them is uh, Megan Smith. And anybody know Megan Smith? <coughs> She's actually now moved over and is working for uh, Obama. Um, he's, she's actually running. Uh, the, she's the main person in technology now for the Obama administration, and she's awesome. She actually headed up the driverless car, the Google X project. Do you guys know about the driverless car that Google's developing? No? Yeah. So, so what do you know? Anything you want to share? Yeah, so, so why would Google develop a, go- a driverless car? Yeah. Why? No driver. No driver, right? But, but why, why would Google do it? Is it for the handicap? Yeah, that's, that's definitely, let, let's hope it's all altruistic, but let's really talk about the business model, right? There's a business model behind it because if you're in a car and that car can take over and drive, which by the way, we're seeing more and more of this in car technology already, aren't we? I, I saw an article the other day that somebody tried to wreck the new BMW, and with all the safety things, it's actually hard to wreck a car now. So we're already seeing this technology come into the car, but imagine being able to take your hands off. What's the first thing you're going to do if you have your hands off the wheel? Take, you, take a nap? No. <laughs> Third thing. Maybe, if you're comfortable and you trust it. Okay, but text. text get on the net. Search Google. <laughs> right? So it's not totally altruistic, although I think there's a huge amount of altruism that is going to come out of this. Definitely handicapped folks could benefit from this. I actually have a video where a blind guy got in a car, told it where they wanted to go, and it sent them there. Imagine you were blind and you had that kind of access to technology. That's awesome, right? So that's about me. Any questions? I'm willing to field any questions you might have about me before. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll bring it up in a little while, and we'll watch it if you want, right? Yeah. Are you married? Do you have any kids? I am married, but not in the traditional sense. Uh, I have a wife, not a husband. Um, my wife actually runs the mobile food <coughs> business that we have, Raw Fresno. She's actually out down at the cart hop today. I typically don't say that in the first day, but you asked me, so I'm more than willing to say it. Mm-hmm. And not as a way to hide, just because I don't <coughs> think it's important to the classroom environment, but I appreciate you asking. Uh, we've been together for 16 years. She has two kids. One of them died, and we have grandkids. So I'm, an, I'm, I'm Riri to them. I'm Riri, and she's nodding. So I'm really blessed. I have a wonderful home life. Really blessed. Yeah. <clears throat> Is your food business all uh, organic? And yep, all local, local organic. Well, mostly local. Or it's all organic, raw food. Um, it's amazing. Uh, it really is. What's and the sh- name of Raw Fresno. Rawfresno.com. Do you guys go downtown when they have all those, like, food uh-huh. trucks? Yep. Yeah, we're, we're part of the, she's part of the truck, the cart hop 
phenomenon here in Fresno. Yeah. She's out at Kaiser. She's out at Bella Fruita. She's out at, she's downtown today. She's, you know, I don't know how she does. If, thank God we eat raw food because that woman's got more energy than I do. Right? And I have a lot of energy. So, other questions? Yeah. Have you been to Organic Fresno? Yeah, and they closed. Did you know? No. Yeah, they did. They closed. We actually knew them. Uh, we helped them start. They started Revive, which was one of the first raw food uh, companies, we, uh, restaurants. We helped them start that, and then they moved on to Organic Fresno, and now they're no longer around. They were in a very awkward location. They were. Yeah. They were. Right off of 99 by Olive. I, I, yeah, it was, I, I never understood the why, the logic behind that. They said maybe it was low rent or something over there. And, and I, actually, the logic was they wanted to serve the public. You know that needed it, and it's true. I mean, we all actually need to be eating more plant-based foods. But I think I've railed on that one stuff <laughs> enough. Unless you want to hear more about it. So are you raw vegan then? Yeah. So I'm not 100 percent vegan. Um, I, I I do. I mean, it, what's what's interesting is I don't want to feel like I'm totally restricted, so that when people ask me to go out to dinner, that I can't have whatever it, the group is having. You know, but I always pay the price. That's the thing, is whenever I eat off of the raw food, I always pay the price. Either in, I don't feel good, my brain's not as sharp, I don't, whatever it is. But sometimes I pay the price because it's more fun to hang out with my friends and do what they're doing. Because I just don't want to feel like I'm the outsider. I, we went totally 100% raw vegan for three years. And I'm so glad we did it. But I kind of like coming back to a little more of a balanced. But again, I'd rather eat that way because I feel better. Yeah. <coughs> so it's a good question because unfortunately we have depleted so much of our soil in the vitamins and nutrients that are that come from the food. We still need to supplement some of our, our no matter who we are these days, we need to supplement with some kind of nutrients. So I do take a B12 uh, because a, a B12 can be found in a lot of different sources, including meat, okay? Uh, but you can get that so easily these days. So I do take a B12. I do take a D vitamin, a D3, because none of us, I'm going to tell you right now, none of us get enough vitamin D, and that's the sun. None of us get out in the sun enough, okay? And the thing is, for those of us that are really white, which I am, right, we probably don't need to be out in the sun so much either, right? And actually the truth is nobody needs to be out in the sun a lot, so you have to try to figure out how to get those vitamin Ds, and D3 is a good way to do it. Good question. That's a good question, yeah. So when you guys go out to eat, like, where do you guys go? Like, stick to your diet. If, say, if you and your wife wanted to go out, where would you guys, take, like, go to? Yeah, so there's, where like. you don't feel yeah. like you messed up or, you know, like, sick or nothing. Yeah, so there's three places we really love. Uh, Dusty Buns, which is right down here on the corner. I think I told you all. Oh, they have a truck too. And, and they have a truck yeah. too, and they have a, a vegan, vegetarian option. They you, anything they cook, you just tell them leave off that and grill my veggies, right? And then Sweet and Spice, which is Indian food. We were talking about that. Sweet and Spice has amazing vegetarian options, which I love there. And we go to Whole Foods. Just go to Whole Foods, hang out with friends, because Whole Foods got a lot of options. Yeah. Have you been to Lassen's? Yeah. Yeah. Lassen's, just because it's not on my side of town, right? Um, but I, if I'm over in that area, I definitely stop them if I, if I need something from Lassen's. They have an excellent vegan uh, fresh foods they make all theirs. Oh, nice. Nice. See, see, there's there's choices all over. So do you, can I ask, do you eat a little bit of vegan or? Yeah. Good for you. Um, I eat meat once in a while, but mostly I'm vegan. Good for you. Sorry, not that it's not, well, okay, we can talk about whether it's not good for the rest of you, but I'm not trying to say, you know, I'm not trying to say we're eating the best diet. Okay, but we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel better when I eat chicken. Okay, well, you know my answer to that? You're not eating the right kind of salad. You're probably eating iceberg lettuce with, with vegetables that have been sitting around forever. You go to the farmer's market, you get a good salad, I'm telling you, it's as nutritious as that chicken. Part of it is what we're used to, right? Part of it is, a lot of it is our brains. I mean, we've been so conditioned to think about the food that we're eating, Right? And, and, that, and I'm not here to take that away. I'm just telling you my choices. That's all I'm really doing is telling you my choices. There's a new movie I just watched called Fed Up that really talks about the obesity crisis in the U.S. because it is bad. And really, who's suffering? The young ones. I mean, we see more and more young people with obesity. And the reason is 
They're eating foods that they think are okay that are not. We're, I mean, the food industry keeps processing. Uh, okay, I can't. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to rail on this. I'm sorry. If you want to rail on this, we'll rail on this some other. Uh, but, but what we're doing to kids and really what we're doing to all of us. Because even if we don't look externally heavy, we probably have a huge amount of fat in our organs. So just because you're thin, don't think you're healthy. Okay? Because trust me, I know a lot of thin people eat a lot of bad food. Okay? And if we and they actually in this movie did a internal um, scan. They showed this because one kid in the family he was obese and he was really struggling. He's like, hey, my brothers and sisters can eat all this food. Why aren't they fat? And they scanned the brothers and sisters and they weren't really any healthier. Okay, so just think about cleaning. Because not only that, I'll end with this. I promise, no more about this, unless you want to know. Is that if you eat better for you, it's better for the planet. Okay? What is good for you is typically good for the planet. So eat an environmentally healthy choice. Yeah? Um, back to the like, skinny people. I got a cousin that eats a lot. And my mom and doctors told me that because it's a slow metabolism. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Metabolism is a huge part of what happens when we digest food. And if, if, if you have fast metabolism, you may not have as much weight, but it doesn't mean internally you're that much healthier. Now, carrying around weight is hard on your bones and it's hard on your structure, no doubt about it, okay? But to say people, the only people that are overweight are unhealthy is not true. And I think, unfortunately, it creates bias and judgment against those that do have weight, right? And I think that's horrific because I know I have been judged so much in my life for that and it did not feel good because then it makes you want to eat more because you feel shitty <laughs> sorry for my inappropriate language okay any other questions yeah what do you do on your free time or yeah what do i do on my free time for vacation. so for vacation i love to travel I, I definitely we want to travel my wife's business keeps us from traveling over the last couple of years what I do on my free time is I try to do service <coughs> I, I really think service is important like tomorrow as an example tomorrow I'm speaking at a elementary school for empowering girls in technology fields because I think as a woman in this field it is important for me to stand up and say you too can do this because it's really important for women and girls to get into technology because we are underrepresented so one of my big passions besides the Google Developer Group is actually trying to get more women and girls in technology. Because the thing is, our voices aren't heard. And because there are so many men in this industry, what we see coming out of the technology field is often men-focused. And it, we really need more feminine voices to be heard in that area. But the other thing I do is I love to exercise. I do yoga. I run. I take care of my body. I love to hike. Uh, I think I told you guys I've hiked half of them twice now. I probably won't do it again, but there's some amazing hikes, you know, uh, around Fresno. So I definitely say check it out. Good question. Sky Harbor Road. Sky Harbor Road is awesome. Yeah, that's a good hike. Real close too, up behind Madame Millerton, uh, right? Sky yeah. Harbor Road. Yeah. And if you just go a little <laughs> higher, you can actually hike all the way to Albury. And uh, uh, what is the new name of that? Uh, the Go Go Gro Anyway, there's a, you can hike like 10 miles up, and it's just beautiful up there. Uh, where do you like to travel? Um, where is like, the most place that you like better? Like so I've been to Hawaii a couple times. We own a timeshare there, so I could go once a year. But it's really hard for me to go to Hawaii now because I feel like so many of us are going. It's destroying that environment. Um, so I definitely have more plans to go overseas. I definitely am going to go back to London. I want to spend a summer in London <coughs> soon. Uh, and just all in that area, um, any, anywhere around, because London's such a central place to, to get to any of those other places around there. I definitely want to spend more time there. But on my list, New Zealand, uh, Greece is on my list uh, for sure. Just anywhere. I, I think we all should travel out of the United States to understand the benefits and the, and the luxuries that we have here is important. Hey, thank you guys so much for your interaction and your questions. I hope that was at all. Hope you got something in your notes for that, right? Yeah? Okay, let's do this. Um, let's, let's go to the course overview. Okay, so this, this definitely, I want to see more notes here. Okay? So let's do this. I'll try to get through this in a few, a little, a few minutes. So, <clears throat> let's go to our course. So here's the syllabus of our course, and you all will take a look at this in a little bit. Okay? There it goes.
You can look at all the things I've had the whole semester planned out somewhat, okay? Um, and you can see it uh, based on the calendar as well. But to scroll down, you're going to have chapter quizzes. So I'm going to go over this. Actually, that's kind of my next thing. I'm going to start with going over classwork, okay? So each week uh, that you're here, we'll have classwork either based on lecture materials or group activities we do. Okay, so classwork, so put that in your notes. Classwork will either be my lecture or it will be class activities that we do. And I tend to want to do a little more class stuff to where we take concepts in the chapter and we talk about them. Because quite frankly, I think as instructors, we lecture way too much. I think the idea is if you can get your hands in there or if you can get with other people and talk about it, I think you get a lot more. Although I think there are times when it is appropriate for me to lecture and I will try to keep those relatively short although I don't know if I'm doing a good job today. Okay. Um, so let me just say this about classwork. So classwork makes up 15% of your grade. So there's 15 of them, so it's 1%. Can you, can you guys see that? Can you see that on the thing here? Okay. So, so again, that'll be various things that we do, and I'm actually going to end up showing you, because you already have notes that you're going to be able to put in Blackboard uh, for your week two classwork already. Okay. So my IT lab is, is the software we're going to use uh, that the rep's going to come in today and talk to you about it. You can see from the syllabus that it's 30% of your grade. That's a pretty good percentage. There's 15 assignments, okay? So it's 2.1 for each, for each assignment that is in there. So what's my IT lab going to teach you? So in your notes, put it's going to teach you Word, Excel, and Word, Excel, and Access. Word, Excel, and Access. Good. You have the screen? Probably better to have the screen. Yeah, right there. <coughs> okay? So it, part of this class is definitely we want to teach you how to use Microsoft Office. Okay? Um, so this program is one we've, we've looked at. We think it's pretty good. It rolled out last semester. Anybody um, used my IT lab taking this class before? Yeah. It, it's had a bumpy road. And we have been told this semester it's going to be much better. This is why I'm having the rep come in to, to tell you that they are your support for that product. But I'm going to show you how to use it and actually probably end up doing the first assignment with you just so you can see how that goes. Okay? Um, if you want, we'll take a look at where it's at. Well, actually, let's just continue and I'll show you in a second. Okay, so my IT lab, Word, Excel, and what was the other one? Access. Access. And that is the database program. Okay, so chapter quizzes. So you have 16 chapters, and in Blackboard, there's a chapter quiz section, if you can see it right here. It's pretty easy to see from the back. You, you guys in the back, can you see that in the gals? So here's, here's my philosophy on chapter quizzes. I allow you to take chapter quizzes as many times as you want until the due date. It's an open book thing. I give no timed tests the whole semester. I don't believe in them. Quite frankly, the research has shown that giving you one time test is actually not a good reflection <laughs> on what you know. It's a good reflection on what you can cram into your brain. Okay? And I just don't believe in them. I don't think they're a good way. But it is a way, I use quizzes as a way to get you into the chapter material. Okay? So, in your notes, how many times can you take chapter quizzes? As many times as you want until when? The due date, okay? And where do you find the due dates? The answer is the calendar. Okay, so let me show you this. Matter of fact, let me do this. I'm going to log out real quick. I'm going to log in as a student account so you can actually see somewhat of what I'm talking about. Is it taking a while? What's up with that? Oh, it is taking a while. Look at that. <sighs> Why are things slow? <laughs> It is is it is it our good quite, good answer? Is it the network's terrible? No, I think things are slow because there's a thousand and one students here texting during class and eating up all the data. So you think they're setting at their terminals right now and they're texting through the net? Because our network is not necessarily the cell phone network. I don't want to go down a rabbit hole because we could talk about this, but right. So you you think it's our campus? Well, yeah. Doesn't it create just so much stuff flying around? It kind of 
Not if they're not, if they're using our Wi-Fi, then yeah. But if they're just using their cell phone connection, then no, it doesn't affect that. Because we have a huge pipe out to the net. We actually have <coughs> a pretty good size, and I could show you the speed on it, uh, out to the internet. Uh, what it is, honestly, partly is who hosts uh, my uh, Blackboard, our Blackboard, because it's not us. It's actually somewhere out there. It's true, a lot of us are going through that pipe, but I think they're slow. That's my theory. And I could actually prove it, but I'm going to hold off on that for a second. So good, good that you thought about it, though. So again, what, what, were I, what was I hitting? I was going to tell you about chapter quizzes, right? And where do you find the due dates? Right, and the calendar is always, and put this in your notes, your calendar is always your first thing that you come to when you come into the course. Okay? <coughs> Am I in the right? Oh, no. Yeah, I'm in 15. Oh, sorry. So here, look what happened. So the calendar, in my case, the calendar is actually showing two colors. Do you see this? And the reason is, is this calendar will reflect multiple courses, okay? So what you can do is if this happens to you, you just come down here and you look. So I happen to see it's got 15, but it also has my 12 class. So when I scroll back up, then I only see this stuff for that class. So. Just know that the calendar is color-coded. If you see other classes, you can take them off so you only see this class, the information. So what you see is our first item is my IT lab. It's due uh, we are next week on um, Tuesday night. Normally, and I want this in your notes, due dates fall Monday night and Thursday night. So in your notes, due dates fall Monday night and Thursday night. Okay? So... My IT lab is there. Your classwork for week two, which I'll talk, in a minute, talk about in a minute, will be due next Thursday at midnight. And then you also will have a chapter quiz due next Thursday. Now, when can you start working on the items due? Now, now which, very good. Which <coughs> items can you already start working on? The IT lab? All of them, very good. The My IT app lab, absolutely. Once we are done, that's what I'm going to have you guys go and set up your accounts. Okay? If you don't have your thing, they give you two weeks free, okay? So I, I recommend, even if you don't have your books, right, or if you're going to buy from them, did I tell you it's cheaper from them? Ooh. Yeah, it's cheaper buying at My IT Lab Direct. It's 75 versus 110, 111 in the bookstore. The thing you don't get, but let's be clear. Okay, so where is it cheaper? Put that in your notes. Where, do, where, where can I get it cheaper? My IT Lab. The only downside is you don't get a hard copy version of the book. You get an e-book. So if you're a person that likes that hard copy, go buy it in the bookstore. Okay? And when you buy it in the bookstore, you'll get a code that gives you access to the online system. So um, when we do the two free weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, we finally get our book, does mm -hmm. it like see? What, so you don't have to work. Very good. Actually, I'm going to show you that. Uh, what's going to end up happening, it's a good question, is that you're going to take the information that you, the scores from, and everybody listen. So I know you're already listening. I appreciate that. The My IT Lab, you're going to do work over here, and then you're going to post your scores into Blackboard. And I'm going to show you how to do that through what's called a print screen. Just so I know, how many of you know how to do a print screen? Show of hands. Print screen. Okay, we're going to learn that first the next week. And if you took my 12 class, you know how to do a print screen because I nail that thing. So next, next week, first thing we're going to learn is how to take a print screen. So if you want to study ahead, I'll show you. It's even on our hands-on assignments. Take a print screen and how to sh upload it into uh, some of the, what we call the cloud. I'm guessing you guys have all heard this term, right? <laughs> Okay, there's many things that can be represented by the cloud, and we're going to upload print screens to the cloud, and I'm going to show you how to do that next week. But the answer to your question is, yeah, it'll be fine. When, even if you go, try to do it before that two weeks. Yeah. Otherwise, it's kind of a pain to sign up, but you can still do it. Okay? Good questions. What were we heading? So the other thing that's due that you could still work on is week two classwork, and here's why. Let me show you. Classwork. And you can see this when I turn it back to you in a second. So week two classwork is you had to take notes from 113 and 115. Okay? So do you have notes from our first day together? Yeah. You should. 
And then you also have notes from next week, from the 20th and the 22nd. So that will be what, you'll t what you can do, what you can start working on for classwork, <coughs> okay? I'm gonna go over this in a little more detail, but in general, here's what I want. Let me just show you, let's just show you, okay? So I'm going to click on, and when you get it, you'll get this as well. You scroll down, and you look for write submission, okay? You do a heading. So the first day was what we were together, 1, 13. You go in here, you make this a heading. You make this a 5, okay? You come over here, you do indent, and you give me your notes go here. You change this to 3, Okay? Now, again, the reason I'm recording this, so you can guys go watch it, but I, I'll go over it a couple more times, I promise, because it's fundamental. Questions about yeah. that? So you put your notes for 113, then you put your notes for 115, which is from today, and then you'll hit, and this is key, what do you think you hit? Of these three options, no. Good. Because do you have all the work done for week two yet? What, what do you not have done? That's right, right? So once you do the notes, if you want to do them today, you would hit save as draft. Can we take a picture of that notes and upload a picture? No. And, and here's why. Here's why. Because my, my, my research has shown that if I tell you and you write it and then you type it, you got it. But if you just take a picture, you only saw it once because you didn't look at it the second time, right? So if I, get it, if I get it in your brain three times, the chances of you getting it are good. So let's actually go over this. Each classwork, you need a heading for what information? So put this in your notes. What information needs a heading? The date. The date. And then topics, if I tell you topics. Okay? And then what is a heading? How, what constitutes a heading? Yeah, good. Font 5 and the heading for a heading format. And then once you do a heading, what do you do? What, what, is, what do I want in the notes? I want it indented. And I want the font changed to what? Three. Very good. So that should be in your notes. Adrian up here is running my equipment, so he does not have to take notes today. So whenever I have recording, if you want to run the equipment, you don't have to take notes that day. Okay? Adrian's happy he doesn't have to take notes. Are you? Yeah? Okay. All right. Questions there? So we were talking about what? We were talking about the things you can work on. And by the way, what should I do right now since I did some in here? Save, draft. Save his draft. I'm not going to, but that's what you should do, okay? So you could work on classwork. You could work part of it. You could work on my IT lab. And you can also work on the third item due next week, which is the quiz, okay? Yeah? So the notes don't have to be complete sentences. No. Okay. No, I just, here's what I'm looking for in your notes to start out with. And it'll vary based on what we're doing. Is I really want to know you were in class and you were paying attention to the major topics I talked about. That's really what I'll look for. And when I want something more specific, I'll tell you. Okay? Good question. Everybody heard that question? Did you make sense? So what am I looking for in your notes? If you're paying attention. Yeah, major topics, are you paying attention? Okay? Okay. Now, hands on. So I also am giving you 16, I think. Let me go see syllabus, right? I think there's 16 of them, hands-on assignments, because I believe that's the way it really helps you learn, okay? So hands-on assignments, how many? 14, sorry. They're worth 20%, so they're worth 1.43 each. 14 of them, okay? And then you're going to have two projects. You're going to have an access database project, and you're going to have a programming project. Okay, those will be worth, and you can see all this in the notes, they are in the syllabus, so you can go look at it. You'll have two projects worth 5% each, and then one final with 5%. Okay? Now, let me just show you an example, because I've already drafted it, of your first hands-on assignment. But where would you find out when it's due? Yeah. Very nice, very nice. And the answer to when it's due is the Monday, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. Because by the way, do you know we're off this coming Monday? Even though this is not our class, you know the campus is off? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
So anytime there's a, a due date that we have campus holiday, I move it. But on the Tuesday, Thursday, I think we be, should be fine. So in week two, I've already drafted what you're going to have to do for your hands-on assignment. And here's what it is. You're going to have to upload a profile picture into Blackboard. It's pretty easy. I'll walk you through it. Okay, not today, but I'll walk you through it next week. You're going to take a print screen of your desktop in class and at home or wherever you work. Okay, so if you don't have a computer at home, you have somewhere else, I'm guessing, besides here that you work, right? Can I assume that's true? If not, then you need to be in a lab. I'm just going to say that, okay? So you either, so I want a desktop print screen, and I'll show you how to do these, of your desktop in class and one at home, and you upload it to the cloud and provide links. I will teach you how to do this. You will take a desktop, a print screen of your desktop or laptop system properties. How many know how to do that? Nice. We'll show you how to do this. This is important. It's like being able to understand a computer is walk up and look at it and understand what kind of processor it is, how big is the hard drive, how much RAM is on it. That's what system properties will tell you. That's basic. It's like introducing yourself to the computer. Computer's introducing yourself to you. Okay? It's like this is what this is what I do. This is how big I am. The other thing you'll want to do is you have to take a print screen of your mobile device. How many know that, what that means? Yeah, same thing. Print screen, screenshot of your mobile device. On an Android phone, it's real simple. I'll, I'll figure out how to do it on, I think I have an iPad I can bring in to do it. Now, if you don't have one, that's okay. Borrow somebody's just for a few minutes. Take a print screen, okay? So like on an Android device, here's how you do it if you want to know. We'll switch to the Elmo real quick, right? Yeah, switch there, okay? So I'm going to hold down the power and the uh, down, and that's a print screen. It did it real quick. I don't know if you guys saw it, right? So it's actually saving it right now, okay? So that's actually a print screen of what is on my desktop, and it's a graphics file. Now, how many people I'm freaking out right now by what you have to do for the first hands-on? No, most of you okay? So do I, let me ask you this. Do you need instruction for how to do this, or do you feel like you could do it on your own? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah? Huh? Can I do it with a tablet? Absolutely. Okay? And that's what I'm saying, right? I'm asking for, so I'm just kind of getting a feel for it because I'm going to show you how to do this stuff. Okay? I'm just kind of curious. Yeah? So you're saying you want to do this on our, like, at home laptops yeah. and stuff like that, too? Yeah. I, I want you to do a print screen here. I want you to do a print screen at home. I want you to do a systems uh, properties on your home device. I want you to do a mobile print screen. And I want you to upload your photo to Blackboard. <coughs> okay? I will go over all of this in more detail next week, but I'm just giving you a preview of what's coming at you and kind of give you an idea of what these hands-on assignments look like. These are actually like you need to know how to do this stuff. Yeah. Good question. You guys all hear that? Does the photo have to be of you? Okay. Let me say it this way. I don't like to make hard and fast rules. I would prefer it be of you. But if you have an avatar, you know what I mean by that? So if you have an avatar you would rather use, use it. Right? But I, it, it also helps me get to know. Right? And I really try to get names down by week two. Okay? Good question. All right, so all this is going to be done with headings and links, and again, I'll show you how to do that. All right, so let me see. I think that was it. Projects. Um, oh, let me just say this, and I'll, I promise I'll end the recording with this, and we'll take a break. My IT lab is going to have something that looks like a project for Word <coughs> and Excel, okay? So we can call it greater project. But I'm going to give you an access and a programming project that will be outside of my IT lab, Okay? Questions? Questions in general? Are you nervous? Have I scared you, anybody? Anybody leaving? Yeah, no. worried? Yeah, nobody's leaving? Um, Maybe? Yeah. No, when are we going to start with the, uh, the textbook work? Today. I'm gonna, I, actually, I'm going to show Here's the deal. My IT lab is a simulated environment for Excel, Word. It has some PowerPoint, which I might offer some, some benefits there we'll talk about. But also in there is your e-text. So I'm gonna, that's why I want you to set up your accounts. So even if you don't have the textbook yet, for the next two weeks, you can go ahead and do the assignments. Okay? 
So I'll show you that. That's what I want to do next. Okay, questions? All right, let's drop the recording. Let's go ahead and have you turn your monitors back around and let's actually get started and do some hands-on and 